to a family of believers uh, that has truly shown me what the body of Christ is really all about. Uh, we came in last week and just kind of took the island over. We felt like at least that part of YPA Gentry, we took it over. We were going to every neighbor saying, can we borrow your forklift? Can we borrow your pallets? Can we borrow anything that you have that we may need? And the Lord provided everything that we needed. But the biggest concern that I had in the whole process was how are we going to load a truck? How are we going to get the lifters there? How are we going to get the people there? We looked at volunteer numbers and we were like, we're going to die a slow death in Wildpia Gentry. But the Lord provided. And that was because, primarily because of people like you. Can I just have those people who served at the Operation Crypt Child Processing Center in Hawaii stand up for just a second? That means, all right, look at this. I mean, praise the Lord for that. I just want to thank you guys, and just the partnership with your church is unbelievable. I mean, we were able to use your banking account and all kinds of things. We didn't use money. We actually put money in there, so just so you know, the church family. But we are so blessed as a ministry to partner with you. You know, we find that there is uh, no way that we can do what the Lord has called us to do without partnering with not only churches within the states, but also international churches that will receive these gifts, these gift boxes that seem so small and seem so simple and seem like, well, why can't everybody do this? But, you know, they are just the miracle, a miracle in the hand of the Lord. You know, they get into the hands of these children and it brings a smile onto a face to a child who maybe never has ever received a gift in their life and brings hope to them in ways that none of us can ever imagine. I mean, these kids are living on garbage dumps. Uh, and just surviving by going through and picking up garbage and things that they can go and recycle. And uh, the thought of these simple gifts of a bar of soap, a washcloth, a toy, a new toy, anything that's new, things they've never had before, is such a blessing that we can understand. But the Lord can use those things to bring children to Him. And that's what it's all about. It's really not even about the gifts, but it's the hope of Jesus Christ that goes with every shoebox gift to tell the children that God, not only do we, do we love them, but... The Lord Jesus loves them, and He wants to bring them to the saving knowledge of knowing that they can have eternal life by accepting Christ into their heart. And that's what it's all about. So, you know, we may think that our job is done here. The boxes are gone. We process 16,500 boxes here on the islands this, this year. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Praise the Lord. We're just so excited about that. But, you know... Our physical work is done, but our spiritual work is still going. There is so much prayer that we need to put behind those boxes and pray for those pastors who will be giving out those gifts and to pray for the children that we're seeing them, that their heart will be receptive to the gospel and that their lives will be changed like our lives have been changed because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So don't forget about the children. Even though we've done the physical work, our, the spiritual work, is, the battles have just begun. All right, so I want to thank you guys so much. Just one scripture I want to share with you. Real quick, it's from Galatians 6, and it's kind of, it's a huge scripture for us at Samaritan's Purse. It's Galatians 6, and it's verse, uh, I think it's 9, I can barely read. Uh, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. You know, we may not ever see that harvest on this earth, but we will see it someday. And your work and your partnership with Samaritan's Person Operation Christmas Child is going to have incredible benefits. Not necessarily for us to see, but for the Lord to see and for us to celebrate when we visit Him when we go to heaven. So I want to thank you guys so much. I just love you guys. We have fallen in love with your church, with the people of Hawaii, and uh, you will be in our hearts and our prayers. And we just can't wait to see what the Lord does with Operation Christmas Child in the future here on the islands. But thank you so much. God bless. You know, this last week I was just thinking how blessed I am. And I was thanking God. I just said, Lord, you, I, am, I am so, I, I am so, I'm a blessed man. I'm so blessed. Lord, you have blessed me. And the Lord didn't need to speak audibly, but he said to me the following. He says, well, you've blessed me. I said, well, how have I blessed you? You know, I'm, I, I'm a complainer. I'm, I'm stubborn. I'm proud. I, I know none of you are. I'm talking about myself here. And he said, well, 
And he started to just bring to my remembrance just little things. When you did that, that blessed me. That blessed me. When you, when you did that, that blessed me. I think about when it comes to the children. And when Jesus said, such is the kingdom of heaven made of these. And how much of a blessing it is to him when we bless the least of these. I would say that the Lord would say, you're blessing me. Yes, I've blessed you, but all the work you are doing and have done was a blessing to me. And I believe we have treasures in heaven where moth and rust cannot destroy and thief cannot break in and steal. And we will never see it until we're up there with him. And then he'll show us. When you did that, there's the reward. There's the treasure. Because you took the time to do that. What a blessing to me it was. Enter in. Well done. Good and faithful servant. God is so good. And I thank God for what he did through this fellowship. As small as we are. <laughs> I feel like we were a Gideon sized army, right, Renee? The, you guys so tirelessly and I mean it just it's amazing to me. I think I think God, you know how we would we would pray, Lord, when you're searching the earth to and fro, you know, your eyes are throughout the earth, to and fro, looking for hearts fully devoted to you so you can be strong on their behalf. I think when you did that, you know, worldwide search, and he doesn't use Google, doesn't have to. Uh, he found us. He found this little obscure fellowship called Calvary Chapel Kaneohe. And he said, they have a heart for me, a heart fully devoted to me. I can be strong on their behalf. You know, God's never really looking for ability. He's looking for availability. And when we give him our availability, then he gives us the ability. And I think that's what we've uh, seen here. So thank you so much. Thank you, Joey, for coming up and, and sharing. Okay, we're in the book of Leviticus. We've been going through the Bible book by book, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. We started in Genesis. We made it through uh, Exodus, and we are in Leviticus. And so if you can turn there at this time and uh, get ready. It is a short chapter. It won't be a short teaching. So you're not going to get off that easy. <laughs> Both Leviticus 17 and 18 deal with how the uh, Israelites were to offer their sacrifices and their worship to God. Uh, God is now going to instruct them on how he wants to be worshipped. See, the problem is the Israelites had embraced the practices of the pagan nations around them. Uh, this is really all they knew. Now think about this, that uh, they had been in slavery in Egypt for over 400 years. So uh, these Israelites, that's all they knew. They were born in slavery. This is the first time they've ever uh, seen anything or experienced anything outside of Egypt. So all they knew was all they knew and what they had learned when they were in Egypt. And what they learned in Egypt were the practices of the pagans. How that they would offer their sacrifices to the demonic gods and goddesses. And remember now, the Egyptians had plenty gods, <laughs> plenty goddesses. And the way that they would worship these gods, with a little g, was very sexual and very musical in its nature, in the way that they would worship. And so this is what God is now going to instruct them on. And he's going to teach them, really show them, and even command them how it is that he desires to be worshipped. It's only been really less than a year since they had uh, been delivered out of Egypt. So now that the Israelites are out of Egypt, God has to get the Egypt out of the Israelites. Now, I know you know that in typology, Egypt is a type of the world. 
So too, as the Israelites were delivered out of slavery from Egypt, we're delivered